properly trace Kings Island's roots, we must first start in another park in a different location. Coney Island opened its doors to the public in 1886 on the banks of the Ohio River near Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, old Coney areas, uh, 4th of July, Barnum and Bailey, red, white, and blue, exposed light bulbs, the Barker in front of the show, things like that. Just, uh, as Coney Island would have looked uh, at the turn of the century or a little later than that. I think it'll be probably one of the most exciting areas in the park because it will be typical of the amusement park as people uh, know an amusement park basically. Really, what Coney Island Mall was to be was a reproduction of old Coney Island. Well, we brought a lot of flat rides up, what we call flat rides. We brought the Dodgem, the Whip, and the Cuddle Up. Those are old rides dating back to the, uh, Lord, 20s and 30s of uh, Coney Island. I think we brought the Wild Mouse up. We brought a lot of games. Um, another interesting story about the racer. The shooting star at Coney Island was wildly popular. Uh, it replaced the old Clipper in 1947, and it was one of the great coasters in the country. It was an out-and-back coaster, and it had grav uh, it, it was a uh, n negative gravity ride, and you'd sail out and back and lift out of your chair, and, and it, people just loved that. In any event, as popular as it was, we didn't just want to rebuild the Shooting Star, because that wouldn't have been anything new and different. So I researched it a little bit, and I... I came up with the thought that racing roller coasters side by side were a big thing in the 1920s. And for some reason, they stopped building racing roller coasters. And I said, let's revive that concept. Let's build a racer. So we dealt with a guy in a company in um, Philadelphia called Philadelphia Toboggan. They designed roller coasters, and they sold skee-ball alleys. They were in a lot of traditional stuff. And there was a wonderful old engineer named John Allen, who was the president of that company, and he'd been trying to retire for years. And I called him and I said, will you help us design this project, John? He was a great guy. He said, Gary, I, I just can't. I'm trying to retire. I've been trying to retire for five years. People are always calling me about stuff. And I said, John, are you going to our convention in Chicago this fall? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, John, I'll see you there. <laughs> and... Um, we met him at the convention, and my father and I took him to a bar called Well of the Sea in the Sherman House Hotel, and we pumped a few cocktails in him, and us as well, and we walked out of there with a signed agreement that he was going to design the racing roller coaster for us, which he did, and that was a, just a great coaster. People were just thrilled to be racing back and forth, and that was something new. <laughs> This is a double coaster in the sense that two trains are going to race each other. I'm going to leave that incline and come down side by side through these two tracks to see which one can get home first. We have to get them wild. And this is a wild one. And personally, I can't wait to ride it because I like them wild and I build them wild. And I would like to see the people scream from the time they leave that top until they hit back on the brakes. It's interesting that the racer, which was our main feature coaster in Kings Island in its opening year, that was the first roller coaster that had been built in the United States since 1946. There were, there were no coasters being built. Disney didn't have any coasters. The new Six Flags parks didn't have any coasters. And the old existing family parks had their own coasters and just kept remodeling them. And uh, ironically, later on, some of the my good friends who ran the uh, Six Flags parks, they came up, and I'll never forget the day they saw the racer, because they didn't have a roller coaster. They saw the racer coaster with a line about a half a block long. I knew immediately they were going to throw their principles out the window and had roller coasters, and that's exactly what they did. 
when that coaster hit the market, everybody and anybody from Disney to Six Flags to whomever, Universal Studios, everybody came to Cincinnati to see that roller coaster. Then became, that became the great proliferation and the beginning of the roller coaster was reborn. So since then, in 1972, literally thousands of roller coasters have been built around the world all because of the, what the racer spawned. Well, I actually would have the record for the most rides uh, you know, on the racer right now. My, number, my, my ride count would be 11,973. It's something I started in 1981. Uh, on the racer, it's kind of, uh, you know, as a kid going to Coney Island and later Kings Island in the 70s, you know, I always, you know, was just kind of addicted to this business, you know, the atmosphere, you know, was one of the things that always grabbed me. So, you know, buying a season pass in 81, I was up here a lot. And, uh, you know, if you go someplace often enough, you're going to have numbers on something. So that's kind of the reason, you know, behind the numbers with the racer. Nothing I did intentionally. It just kind of developed into what it did. Uh, but, you know, it was a great ride, you know, in the 70s. It was a great ride in the 80s. It's still a great ride today. Well, we brought the uh, flying scooters from, from Coney Island, the old wind sail where you went around and you, you created your draft and, and did it. We brought the monster from Coney Island. We brought the scrambler. We brought uh, just off of the Coney Island uh, entry off, uh, up to International Street, uh, we brought the carousel. So really all of the rides that were at Coney Island were brought to Kings Island. But Kings Island was so much larger, we had to increase by 60% our, our additional rides. So we had to add and build more rides. But the, the main feature that we wanted to create on Coney Mall was the ginkgo trees, which lined the old Coney Mall. And uh, those were very hard to transplant. We had a very talented crew, and we only lost a couple of them. But those uh, ginkgo trees, which were very trimmed and shaped, and well-known at Coney Island were brought to Kings Island. In 1973, Hollywood came to Warren County when an episode of The Brady Bunch was filmed at Kings Island. Uh, it, was, uh, it was our first uh, television experience of, of, of national uh, acclaim and uh, got a lot of uh, newspaper publicity. I remember uh, George Clooney running around that day. He was just a kid, young young fella. He was out there uh, watching it, running around. Uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. They were great people, uh, uh, easy to work with. Uh, it was Hollywood, but it was Hollywood in Warren County and in Kings Mills, Ohio. And so we uh, we uh, actually uh, uh, took a few days. I think they were there about a week, as I recall. And uh, went very smoothly, and uh, of course, people still in 2009 talk about the Brady Bunch coming to Kings Island. Everybody remembers that. The Brady Bunch was here 35 years ago and uh, shot their episode. And you have Mike in the conference room, you know, showing his drawings. You know, that's right up here in the International Restaurant. Who knows? 35 years ago this week. So thanks for coming. In here today to celebrate with me. I probably three. remember oh most, besides the fact we got to go to the front of the lines, which was very cool because we got on a lot of rides, as um, Christopher Knight and I went off in the hot air balloon from the, from the park here. We went out over a field, and, and I'd never been in a hot air balloon. I thought that was really exciting. Yeah, I love the roller coaster, the racer. We did it again today. It's still rock and roll. I remember the crowds watching us film, oh, and 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 how I was thinking, well, aren't is, aren't they going to be in the episode? And sure enough, they're in the episode. You watch those, you watch the episode of Kings Island. There's just people standing there watching us film the Brady Bunch in the episode of the Brady Bunch. It's very funny. Out of all the old rides at Kings Island, who could forget the antique cars? It was spawned from the uh, Turnpike ride at uh, Disney. And it was a ride where you could, of course, drive it yourself and you powered your own cars and you could put four people, six people in the cars, depending on size. And that, so that was a great ride. And it was a double antique car ride. So we had two sides and it was always packed. Uh, back then, uh, it was just something everybody wanted to do. Digging deep into the history of this section of the park not only uncovers memories of Kings Island, but memories that go back beyond the 40 years this park's even been in existence. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at the Coney Island of the past, as well as the future the Coney Mall at Kings Island has in our hearts.